La Unita de Italia. In English, the unification of Italy. Bye. Bye. Stormy Kelly and Rosa Terciano. First, let's go back to the Renaissance. Italy never unified before 1850. Before then, they were all dominating city-states. This led to revival of the West. Remember the Medici family of Florence? What about the Sforza family in Milan? Bet you don't. Well, you should probably already know that in 1815, Italy was reorganized by the Congress of Vienna, and Oof. Lombardy and Venetia were given to Metternich. Remember? Central Italy and Rome were ruled by the papacy. And Naples and Sicily were ruled by the Bourbons. The first attempt at unifying Italy was done by Mr. Giuseppe Mazzini. He preached a centralized democratic republic and male suffrage. He was all about the will of the people. Wake up! What? No! But, but, fine. Because Mazzini's views were a bit too radical, the second attempt was made by a Vincenzo Gioberti. He was a Catholic priest, and he wanted the Pope to be president of all the existing states. And after 1848, the papacy was against the all unification and modern trends. Now, the third attempt was somewhat accidental. It was done by Mr. Victor Emmanuel. He was the ruler of Sardinia Piedmont. He wanted a liberal constitution, you know, civil liberties, parliament, and the duties would be elected by a franchise based on income. Oh yeah, he was known as the man with the mad mustache. One unified Italy. Ah, ah, ah. Get it? Because of the count? Ah, ah, ah. Anyway, the next person we need to talk about is Count Camilo Benzel de Cavour. He was born of noble background, and he embraced the middle class. He was a businessman, which means even though he had limited ideals, they were pretty realistic. Now, in the beginning, he only wanted to unify the northern and central states. You know, just to expand Sardinia until 1859. That's when he needed some allies. You know, like Napoleon III. So he got Austria to attack Sardinia. And in the beginning, Napoleon III was helping out until he thought that his ally was getting just a bit too strong. So he flaked out. He left them there. And in the end, Sardinia wound up only getting Lombardy. That's when Cavour decided to quit. Rosa! Rosa! Ooh. Okay, so Giuseppe Garibaldi, he was born a poor sailor, but he brought Mazzini's ideas to life. He created a group of a thousand volunteer troops called the Red Shirts. Unfortunately, Cavour used him. That was Gary. He's a baldy. Don't laugh at him. At a youth soldier. The Red Shirts only had a thousand men, but they beat the Royal Army of 20,000. They won battles along their way, gained volunteers, and took Palermo. They wanted to attack Rome and the Pope, but Cavour stopped them. Oh. <laughs> Okay, well, Cavour knew that this would lead to a war with France at this point, and he didn't really want that. At this point, he thought Garibaldi was being a bit too radical. Garibaldi didn't fight back, and in the end, the people voted to unify. So, Emmanuel and Garibaldi rode off for unification.
Fun fact. Fun fact. Fun fact. Fun fact. Did you know that last year was the 150th anniversary of the Italian unification? Oh, no, I did not. <laughs>